G'day, I'm Chris Muir. Welcome to this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel. And in today's episode and the following episodes, we're going to be revisiting a classic ADF presentation called Angels in the Architecture. Now, Angels in the Architecture was a presentation that looked at a number of design patterns for putting ADF applications together. That is, all the moving parts and reusable components, your projects, your bounded task flows, your ADF library jars, how to compose those into different structures or patterns for building ADF applications. Now, the thing we'll discover as we go through the next set of episodes is there isn't a one size fits all with these patterns. Each pattern has some benefits, some pros, some cons, and you really need to address your background, your requirements, your team skills, your business processes, your infrastructure against each one of these patterns to see if it's applicable to your use case or not. Now, uh, over this next set of episodes, we'll be really delving into each pattern per episode, but if you're particularly interested, this particular presentation, Angels in the Architecture, or the ADF Architectural Patterns presentation, has in fact been recorded as a YouTube video in its entirety previously, and you can sit down and watch it in one go. And it's about an hour long. But believe me, it's one of the most watched videos and also one of the most liked videos for uh, ADF development because it really does give you the big picture of what you're tempted to achieve in, in terms of architecture. So on the screen here, you can see the link to that original YouTube uh, presentation and you can go in and digest that whole presentation now or otherwise join me as I introduce over the next couple of episodes, well in fact uh, approximately seven to eight episodes, we introduce each architectural pattern episode by episode, just talking about their characteristics, their design and their pros and the cons. Now, one of the things we just need to state up front before delving into the very first pattern and the rest of the patterns is essentially that when we talk about ADF architecture, we're talking about the moving pieces within an ADF application. In computing, you have the concepts of enterprise architecture, system architecture, integration architecture, and very much those are interested in how wider systems integrate with each other and may even be interested in network topologies, hardware, uh, hardware server uh, settings and all that. We're not going to that level in these set of presentations or these episodes. We're really just talking about how an ADF application is put together. From there, the next important point to make is while over the next set of episodes, I will be introducing a number of patterns and there will be a logical progression to them. It will feel that the later ones are more sophisticated, maybe a bit more complex, but more sophisticated. What Oracle's not attempting to do here though is dictate any particular architectural pattern to you. You cannot go back to your bosses or your uh, fellow colleagues and say, well, Chris Muir said this is the best pattern because we're not attempting to do that at all. With patterns, just like jumpers, when your mum's knitting a jumper, or your grandmother, I should say, is knitting a jumper, hopefully your mum's not that old yet, but basically you know when she does and does uh, knitting and makes a jumper, that a pattern, well, even though you've got a pattern, you use different patterns for different size people and different age people, and different patterns suit different requirements. There isn't a one-size-fits-all jumper pattern or um, jacket pattern for knitting. So with the architectural patterns for ADF, it's exactly the same. You really have different patterns that suit different needs. And you need to assess and uh, think about your team skills, your business processes, your infrastructure, your requirements when picking any one of the following patterns. So please do not come back and say, Chris Muir said this is the best architectural pattern because I won't admit it, Basically, this presentation, every time I've presented it, has always been set up in a way to put the emphasis back on you to pick the pattern that is best for your requirements. So what we'd like to first do, though, is just talk about all the different patterns we're going to look at. And this diagram here, in fact, shows you a genealogy map of all the ADF patterns and how they kind of progress. What you might notice in this genealogy map progression from left to right is the we have a number of patterns on the left hand side in blue which are really revolutionary changes or patterns that are changing quite substantially upon each other in the fact that they're introducing new ADF features that allowed us allows us to come up with quite sophisticated architectures. 
But beyond that, once we reach the sum of the part application architectural pattern, this really opens up a number of options or permutations in the patterns that we've uh, well that we've got to at this stage, and gives us a whole different bunch of uh, patterns here, such as we can see the two for one deal, the cylinder pattern, the pillar pattern, the multi-axis channel pattern, or really just permutations of the sum of the parts pattern that are all made available by well introducing one little sophisticated ADF feature. In the patterns that we will look over in the next couple of weeks, we'll also look at an anti-pattern. It's one I've entitled the fine-grained architectural pattern. And I must admit, this is one that I actually implemented at a particular customer site back in the good old days when I was learning ADF. Now, this particular pattern had grandiose ideas, but unfortunately, through the goal of too much reuse, it ended up being an anti-pattern, and I hope I can share some lessons with this anti-pattern for you, so that you know you can see the limits of patterns and the actual reusable side of the ADF applications. Anyway, so we're going to progress through all these different patterns over the next set of episodes, and in today's episode, we're going to focus on the small and simple application architectural pattern. The small and simple architectural pattern, its characteristics can be described as this. Well, in fact, you're already familiar with it. If you've done any development with JDeveloper and ADF, you would have used the Create Application Wizard and you would have used the Fusion Web Application Template, which ultimately creates one application workspace, one deployment artifact, a EAR file, an enterprise archive, two projects, a model view controller, with the model project being made up of ADF business components and the view controller being made up of at least one unbounded task flow. And for this specific pattern, we're going to say no bounded task flows, thus the name small and simple. So the characteristics are pretty easy, but let's look at a diagrammatic notation in order to explain uh, and, and give you a visual representation of how this pattern looks. Okay, so the first thing we have is an application workspace. And the application workspace is made up of a model project. Now, as you know, a typical model project will have ADF business components, will include entity objects, view objects, application modules, and potentially framework extensions. Now, the number of EOs, VOs, and application modules you have is based on your requirements and your design, and it's not something that we can restrict via the architecture, nor would we. In addition, the framework extensions, well, that's an Oracle recommendation. And what that is for is, well, you're meant to, or what we often recommend at Oracle, is that you go and create a whole bunch of extension classes from the Oracle JBO server classes. You basically create all these classes, then allow your EOs, your VOs, your AMs to inherit off those classes in turn. And this allows you at a later point, if you need to add any code that goes across, for example, all entity objects or all view objects, um, while, rather than actually inserting the code in their associated input classes, you can now just, for example, do it in the, one of the framework extension classes. Beyond the model project, we then have a view controller project. And as we know in the view controller project, typically you have an unbounded task flow. And here, our unbounded task flow will be made up of a number of pages. Again, the number of pages dictated by your requirements. In addition, within the view controller project, the view controller project will be made up of potentially one or more page templates, maybe declarative components, maybe skins, basically all reusable artifacts, and maybe some view controller extension classes such as ADF utils, JSF utils, or what other, uh, whatever other code you'll have in your actual overall architecture. Now the final part in the puzzle here for this particular pattern is that it will generate one ear file. Okay, so the application workspace will ultimately uh, create one deployment artifact, an ear file. And this will become more important when we look at the other application architectural patterns a little bit later on. Given we've now looked at a diagrammatic notation of this small and simple application architectural pattern, let's now consider some design considerations. Firstly, model project. Well, you know, you're going to have a number of entity objects, view objects that you'll need to design for, but one maybe primary design consideration is the number of root application modules that you're going to spawn for each user session, and that'll have a number of different connections and transactions. Now, that idea is one that has been like a central question on ADF development for a long time. And luckily for you, we will cover the ultimate question, how many root application modules do you need in a later episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel? But again, it's one primary design consideration. 
from the view controller's perspective we also have the consideration of how many pages we're going to have in our application and how they're all strung together through our unbounded task flow and this would be very familiar to traditional web ui designers who basically make websites out of pages now as we haven't introduced bounded task flows and regions and page fragments we're not yet making use of this very sophisticated adf architectural feature and doesn't really play in on this small and simple application architectural pattern in addition, because we're not using bounded task flows, we're not using one of the major reuse components provided by the ADF uh, framework as such, and this really again keeps our overall architectural pattern small and simple. Now, the advantages of this particular architectural pattern is because we have only one workspace, our build and deployment is a very simple exercise. It's basically one right-click build and then deploy to an application server. When we look at some of the later application architectural patterns, it's much more complex than this. So this particular architectural pattern is a very simplistic one um, from a build and uh, deploy perspective. And because of that, that makes it ideal for small teams or small applications um, or um, beginners, essentially, okay, who are starting out with ADF for the first time. Now, let me be very clear there. I'm not saying this is only an architectural pattern for beginners as such. This application architectural pattern is very ideal for very small applications. In fact, I've built and been responsible for a very small team of developers who built an application comprised of one page and no page fragments. And this architectural pattern was ideal for that very small application. So you should really consider it. In addition, some of the other advantages about this application architectural pattern is because it is just self-contained, a one-click or one right-click build and deploy um, type solution, you don't need more complex infrastructure to support you to build this application, uh, an application built on this architectural pattern. You don't need dependency management tools such as Apache Maven or Apache Ivy. And while it would be ideal to have tools like Hudson and Jensen, uh, Jenkins, which are continuous integration servers to nightly build your application, it's not overly needed because again, at this stage, your application is rather small and simplistic. The disadvantages of this particular architectural pattern though is because we haven't introduced the concept of bounded task flows, we're not really using one of the primary usable artifacts provided by the framework. In addition, bounded task flows or BTFs, because they're all based around the concept of processes and flows, you're really losing one of the, well, if I can use this term, one of the very strong programming metaphors, which you can use to talk to your business analysts in the same language that they use, processes and flows. So that's kind of unfortunate in picking this particular architectural pattern. In addition, another major limitation of this architectural pattern is the fact that, well, because everything's contained within one workspace, you have very, well, the potential for very tight coupling and poor modularization of your code to occur. Because, well, there's no clear delineation of the different parts of your application in terms of, let's say, banner task flows or flows. Basically, all the codes merged into one. And if you have multiple developers working on the same application, they might accidentally share code when they're not meant to. So this doesn't make it a particularly great pattern for um, essentially making sure that you don't have type coupling going on. You can't now unit test parts of your application separately. You can't, for instance, later on tear bits out and reuse them elsewhere because, well, there's a good chance that your programmers have effectively tightly coupled everything together. Another disadvantage of this particular application architectural pattern is as you get a larger application, you add more and more pages and more and more code. Well, unfortunately, that very simple build, that one right click build and deploy, will now take a lot longer because all the code is matched into one workspace. And that, while for small applications is an issue, will become an issue for larger applications at some stage. And that concludes our discussion on the small and simple application architectural pattern. And it's the most tongue twisted of all the patterns, so hopefully I won't have to say it anymore. So in the continuing episodes from here, we're going to look at the other architectural patterns. And specifically on the next episode, we're going to look at the colossal pattern, which is kind of an extreme of the small and simple architectural pattern. And it'll give you an idea of, well, the pros and cons and the benefits of putting everything in one workspace, particularly when our application gets particularly large. 
Beyond that, in the other episodes, we'll continue down to the sum of the parts, where suddenly when we look at the sum of the parts episode, we realize there's a lot of options available to us when we realize one little feature, that of the ADF library jar. Just a reminder, if you don't want to particularly sit and wait for all the episodes for each application architectural pattern to be revealed over the following weeks, you can go straight to YouTube and watch the full Angels in the Architecture presentation and uh, basically get all the content in one go, though it is a rather long presentation, about an hour in length. Anyway, thanks very much for joining us in the ADF Architecture TV episode today. Hope you'll join us in the following episodes and we look forward to having your patronage again soon.